Okay, so now tell, tell me, so the second second I'm interviewing here, Rabbi Moshe Yosef Engel, a shliach the Rebbe in uh, Long Beach, California, since 1970. That's 54 years, Baruch Hashem. So tell, tell me now a little bit about, now you became a yeshiva bocher in the Montreal Abadji Yeshiva. Talk a little bit about your yeshivas, your mashpiyim, your chaveirim, please. Basically, our family lives in Montreal. Yes. And I was... I went to Lubavitch and I had a very good experience. It right. Was like to, I, you know, and uh, little by little, I grew into it. I would say maybe by by age uh, fourteen, fifteen, for sure, I was a solid Lubavitch kid. Right. Maybe sixteen, seventeen. I remember. Speaking with someone, and we read two bachrim were talking, and uh, and he said to me, you know, when I die, I'm going to be buried in a lavish cemetery. The other boy said to you, and I said, I feel the same way. <coughs> and I just remember that. Don't ask me why or what. But I just I had that feeling. That, that feeling. So, who made the biggest impact to you in those years in yeshiva? Everyone, all of them, all the teachers, well, see the teachers I mentioned before, those were the elementary school, grades. right. Uh, the teachers that I'm uh, now, I was in Miss Heidish. So there was Ingenia Gorari, had a big impact on me. There was uh, Pena Korf. Pena Korf had a big, big impact on me. Robin Greenglass was our. Uh, see, the, he was on uh, our Mashpia, but he was also, I remember learning Lee Kutu Kerb with him. Right. And, uh, what was your opinion? Pe- Pe- was a Mashpiach? Yeah, he was a Mashpiach, and he, uh, he carried the yeshiva. Uh, he, we, we all respected him very much. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why or what he was all. I remember one time. Bochum asked him to for Frank. I not remember what the occasion was, but he just said, okay, come over to my house. He came over to his house. He had a whole saying of Trinigo, and then he had no opinion. He did this the whole night with for Frank. He, did, he didn't say a word. He just, it, it was, it was very touching to me. Uh, and he put it in the high and that, that 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 was it. That was the picture. I also remember oh, this was not a good situation. I remember David Kutlarski on the He passed away. He passed away there when I was in the yeshiva. Yeah. He was in your kita? I don't remember. Either one higher or lower. Okay. okay. We were in the same Right, the same basement. I remember Friday night. Oh, he was the announcer in the show. What do you mean, the announcer? Yeah, oh, make it like a Yeah. Like a Gabbai. Like a Gabbai, like of the Bach. Of the Bach, yeah. So it came Friday night, and uh, so they told him he forgot to announce Tillam, the Shabbos Mubarak. Yeah. So he said, don't worry, we'll be saying Tillam anyway. That night, I went, I ate my balboa, so I'm coming back from the eating, and I see a bunch of guys running this way, out of the dorm, towards Yeshiva. And later I realized they were good friends, and he had passed away that night. Mm-hmm. He, that was the first night he decided he was going to make uh, a dorm meal, rather than me having to go to and it was a small, it was like six, seven guys. And I, I don't remember what happened, but I believe that he ate something and then he said, I'm not feeling well, he laid down and that was the end. Hmm. So, so they were saying to him anyway. So they were, he said they'll be saying to him anyway. I do remember an, an incident, again, I don't know if, it fits in here, but used to Thursday night was our minute to break into the kitchen. <laughs> 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 so 
so I don't remember who it was, but a few guys spoke for the vacation, and this time they did a, a job. There was nothing left. <laughs> the cook, cook came in the next morning. She was so upset. There was no food for her to make. It. Anyway, in lunchtime, oh, so, so the two or three guys that were culprits. Yeah. So they, their punishment was they're not getting lunch. Right. One of them went to the government of Uh huh. So I remember this scene of a Shrey walking by. We're all eating lunch, and he's not eating lunch. I think there were two or three guys, but him I remember. And he got up and he said, Rabbi Shrey, if they don't give me food, I'm going to die. And if I die, you'll have to come with me, accompany me to the funeral. Three weeks before he died. Just remember that it happening to me, and we all thought, you know, it was a joke. And he, and to him, it was a joke. He passed away, Masi Shabbos Parsha Shweis, Momo Shur. No, you just said he passed away Friday night. Because you no, said. I mean, the Levi. The Levi left to New York. Oh, 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 Masi Shabbos. Yes. Masi yeah. uh, Shabbos when? I think it was Parsha Shweis. Uh huh. And he, uh, he was buried in New York. Right. Actually, that Shabbos Rebbe spoke oh, no. there was a sicha, something to comfort his father. I think. Yes, I, I heard that. He was, I heard a good bacher, I heard, no? He was a chsidish bacher? He was a chevron. Uh-huh. I, I, I wouldn't say he was not. He definitely was one of the leaders of the Yeshiva. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Who was your chavrusis? My chavrusis. One was the Nassim Stein. Yeah. He was now lives in Detroit sure. for many, many years. We learned together. We learned together and we learned Pikas together with a, a brand for, for a few years. You mean Chumash and Rashi and Tanya? And then we used to go Shabbos, we had it in the shul. Sicha. Sicha. Right. So we used to, both of us went to a very far show. So we went far, we walked probably 25 minutes together, and then he went that way, and I went that way, and because of in a show. Right. I will tell you something that to me was very interesting. I don't know if it would be interesting to your crowd, but I once went with the Bocher to Hazard in a show. He was. He was the bacher and I was the company. Yeah, right. I thought he did such a terrible job. And I, I didn't remember what they did. Did they do it overwhelming? I, I said, if that's the case, I can pass it too. And that's what made me pass it to Sikha. Every job is at the home. And I would read two paragraphs. I would Passing them over, and I would have my mother listen to me. And I did next two paragraphs, and that's how I became a statistical uh -huh. Um I won't tell you anything. That's all right. Um, what about in Gemara, Nigla? Who was your Oh, Stein was Nigla? Then Sin Stein. Good question. I just remember we said a very important thing. Here said, uh, you saw Ruben? Yeah. You can tell Here said, Moshe Baruch Newman, who later became a Misnagid and became a member of the Shikla Shiva, Moshe Pais is a Shiva. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, we were, uh, well, not we, but we were a little responsible for him moving away from Shabbat. Oh, because you guys alienated him, you checked him. him. They checked it. Yeah. They, Th this is Label Newman's brother? Yeah. Oh. Label Newman? There were three brothers. Label? Oh, yeah. And yeah. the what? The one from that California. Huh? Yeah. And Meshavar. And Meshavar. He's alive still, Meshavar? Last time I knew, he came to California for some simcha. Mm -hmm. His brother was making a costume. Right. Something like that. So he became a leadership. 
in literature and, and, and the Hush of the literature. You uh, have a Shiva and the Moshe Francis Shiva. Yeah, so why do you bring that? Because he said, oh, he, he, he was there. Oh, oh so, so he sat here. And, my, and Ruben and was Ruben, there. So Ruben was uh, the genius. Yeah. He was uh, a regular guy, but he Harvard. He in Harvard, he would come in, like we finished all the evening, we hung around, we talked. He would come in and then cousin over and cousin over. That, that was his thing. Mm -hmm. uh, then Vince Hillstein said opposite me, and I said, yeah, that was us for, that was our table. But Hasidus, who was your Chavrus and Hasidus? Okay, did you have any relationship, connection with their parents, Machkin? A little bit only, because my parents, he was officially the Mashpia of Montreal. Yeah. I had very little connection with him because I was in the yeshiva that was upstairs yeah. on the second floor and hardly ever saw him. What I do remember is that it was, I mean, I guess it was 1967, I'm not sure of that. We decided to put on a big forum, a big forum event, a bunch of all. So we made, uh, I think we rented a hall, or got a, we got a hall uh, in the public school. And I remember we put on a play. And I, I just remember I worked very hard on that. Probably the other guys did too, I just remember myself. Afterwards, we wanted to go to the Reference for Brandon. So we had, we got a, we had plane tickets. But after our show, we went to Reparis Lashkin's house. Uh huh. For that's, Brandon. That's where we went. Well, well, Brandon and I to this, uh, to this port. Port, uh huh. And you remember that his wife was blind? Or almost blind, and they said that she became blind from crying over her two children that never got out of Russia, which later got out of Russia. Yes, yes. Uh, Shmuel and Yosef, I think. Right. And, and, uh, and then we got on the plane and went to New York. And I remember getting into the Ferengen. That's the last thing I remember. I think that counts now. <laughs> Since you mentioned uh, the Fabrengen and the Rebbe, when was the first time you met the Rebbe? Do you recall? I, yes. I went to the Rebbe for my bar mitzvah. My teacher was Rabbi Yankel Shvein. Your, your teacher was Rabbi Yankel Shvein? He was my bar mitzvah teacher. Oh, not your Rebbe, your yeshiva at the time. Right. My, my, my mother signed me up with somebody else to go to teach. And then uh, start, he started talking, or maybe he was my brother at that time, but he started talking to me. He said, what, where are you going to do permits for me? So I said, I don't know. Started with, he says, how can your mother pay for it? She's got all money. She doesn't have money. He says, come, I will teach you. So he became my very mistress. At a certain point, when he saw how beautiful my voice was, he said to me, News that I guess I can say was a was a my head that you can see that I didn't know. Other Hasidim couldn't sing. Right. Bigger Hasidim. Right. Bigger Hasidim. But also had no tune. No good. No tune. Couldn't hold the tune. But so he brought he 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 suggested you go to the Rebbe. That's how that's what I was asking you about. I I guess around then maybe we all I I don't remember. And from there. I do remember. Him speaking to me, saying before you go into the Rebbe, go to the mikveh. I remember him telling me that uh, I should write. Oh, we should write a second. And he helped me write the second. This was for my bar mitzvah. Right. Because my bar mitzvah, where I was born in Chavta Shvat, and we were going to New York for Yud Shvat. The yeshiva, the holy yeshiva. Right. So, as it turned out, I used to go into the Rebbe. Once or tw uh, twice a year. Twice? Twice, why? Because once we went as a group. Ah. Our class, our, our, the Bachram from Montreal. 
And then once I went because it was Yish Shvat, and it was right before my Yimaledis, so that's when we used to go. So I went into the Rebbe twice. Okay, now, could, now I met, so that means you had your kid, as it seemed like, from 1960 to 1967, pretty much, 10 years in a row. Could you share something from those Yechidus and that's a, li a little bit, yes, I could share. Uh, first of all... Stop, 